Keep your heads lifted up, beautiful family in Jesus Christ. I missed y'all. And here's the verse of the day. And it's Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now I'm going to jump right into the signs, right where Jesus Christ said they would be in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And again, Jesus Christ will never leave thee nor forsake thee, family. And he will not tarry. His timing is perfect. Everything he does is perfect. So I'm taking you right to child. And as you can see, child is right under the eagle's wing, which leads me to and leads me to remind you Psalms 91 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Under his wings shall thou trust. And it's not a coincidence that the asteroid star, minor planet, child, is right under the wing of what they call Aquila, the eagle. And remember, the woman represents Israel. And Revelation 12, 2 says, And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And the child under the wing of the eagle represents the body of Christ, us, family. And remember, Revelation 12, 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And again, remember the verse of the day, He will never leave thee nor forsake thee, and the child will be caught up to the throne. We will be raptured. Everyone that has the Holy Spirit, Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. The quicken your mortal bodies is the being changed in the twinkle of an eye. So again, if you have the Holy Spirit that he sent on Pentecost, you will be changed in the twinkle of an eye and caught up raptured in the anniversary of when the world is recognizing when jesus christ was caught up ascension day is just a couple days away may 9th and today's may 7th and we'll start with acts 1 7 and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father hath put in his own power but ye shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, caught up, raptured, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And you all know it's true. Jesus Christ is coming back on a cloud to rapture the bride. When he comes back at the end of the seven years, he touches down on the Mount of Olives. Two different events. The rapture, he comes like a thief in the night. The second coming, everyone here will know the day that he comes. It'll be at the end of the seven years. Now back to the signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars that just created the sign of Jonah and Nineveh, which was a 40-day warning for Jonah to warn Nineveh to repent. And the biggest rapture signs that we've ever seen in history... Well, all glory to our Father in the name above every name, Jesus Christ. I was just in Rapture, Indiana, and I drove back through the path of the eclipse. And it's obvious that he created this sign and this eclipse to tell us to repent from sin. And if the body of Christ would repent and humble themselves, then he might have mercy on the United States of America and the rest of the world. But as I drove through Indiana and Missouri and Kentucky and Oklahoma and Texas, there was tornado warnings and flood warnings on the whole path. I drove by 
this motel that was completely demolished. And there's still warnings. And there's going to be more tornadoes and more destruction. And Jesus Christ is telling me that it's going to happen through the rest of the 40 days that leads us right to Pentecost. Holy Spirit Day. So let's all keep praying for America and Israel and the whole world and praying that God has mercy on the world until he comes and takes us home. And all glory to our Father, I showed you all these signs around the eclipse, including Jerusalem, right behind what they call Cetus, the well. And on Ascension Day, on May 9th, in just a couple days, you can see that Jerusalem is now in what they call Cetus the Well. And today, right above Jerusalem, you could see that the moon is right next to the sun. In between what they call Jupiter, Uranus, and Venus. Right underneath the false god that they call Aries. Right now, today. And when you go through the days, you can see that the sun is lining up with what they call Uranus, Jupiter, and Venus is catching up and running with the sun all the way to June. And in June, Venus will be lost in the sun. And you can see it disappear right there in the sun, what they call the bright morning star, Venus. Now back to the sign of Jonah, Nineveh, the X, the two eclipses that made the X across America, dead center, directly in the middle, Rapture, Indiana. When I got there, there wasn't anything there except for one house. So I did some research and there's only one person that lives in Rapture, Indiana. And when you zoom in on the left side of the road, directly across from the house, you could see the mailbox with the mile marker. And I took a picture of that for you too, all glory to our Father, because when you zoom in, the mile marker is three miles. And three miles from Rapture, Indiana, is a little town called New Harmony, Indiana. And when you look at this man's mailbox, you could see that it looks like it's 3,800. One of the numbers are missing. So three miles away from Rapture, Indiana, where the only house is, and that's the only thing in the whole town, I stayed in New Harmony, Indiana, three miles away. And they put me in room 155, and I looked it up in Strong's, and the definition is a request in Greek, a petition, a request. And in Hebrew, the definition is glory, a cloak. And when you scroll down, it comes from adar. And it means garment, glory, mantle, robe, splendid. And inside that room, 155, was this picture of fallen angels. It's very clear. So I took that picture down and shoved it between the desk. And then I rented a golf cart and started driving around this town, noticing that they were worshiping fallen angels. And there's a statue of one made out of stone that I took a picture of for you right here. And then I was led to this huge museum that was out of town in the middle of nowhere along this river that they named Athenium. And the two women that were there told me and showed me that this beautiful church from way back in the old days was destroyed and reassembled. They took all the bricks of this church and used them to create this roofless church that was gigantinormous. It had to be 20 feet high. And this other thing off to the left that you could see had to be, I don't know, 50, 70 feet high. The doors on this thing were gigantinormous. And when you get inside, it has these open doors that look reminded me of the Colosseums in Rome and things like that. And to the left of those is this, and I'm not even going to get into it right now. But it's obvious that this town is worshiping fallen angels and giants. And behind that museum, or whatever you want to call it, along the river, I seen this giant chair. 
Nephilim chair, a giant chair. Then I went to a church in this town and the preacher was preaching about the angels, how they're supreme beings. And he was talking about the angels over and over and over how powerful they are. But then he did actually say the obvious that people shouldn't be worshiping or talking to these angels. They should be going directly to the father, God, Jesus Christ. So I'll give them that. And there's a lot more. And I grabbed a catalog out of the museum that is completely off the charts, family. And God willing, I'll touch on some more of these things. But real quick, remember, there's a 40-day window right between this eclipse and Pentecost. And that place, New Harmony, Indiana, right next to Rapture, Indiana, just a few miles away, according to the mile marker, is idolizing and worshiping giants and fallen angels. It's very clear. And all around the path of this eclipse is being hit with tornadoes and storms and floods. So I wouldn't be surprised if this place, New Harmony, Indiana, gets wrecked. And it's obvious that God is pouring his wrath out on America, especially around the path of this eclipse, and it's obvious that he gave us this sign to give his people 40 days to repent from sin. Just because we're covered by the blood and saved because we believe in Jesus Christ and we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man boast it's the free gift of God. It does not mean that he does not want us to repent from sin. And the government... And the non-believers, they could care less about this eclipse and the sign that God is showing us. He's calling on his true worshipers to worship him in spirit and truth and turn from the world and prepare themselves to be caught up. And I just got hit with the Holy Spirit. All glory to you, Father, in the name above every name, Jesus Christ. And I love you, family. And I'll be back shortly with more signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. God willing, and all glory to our Father in the name above every name, Jesus Christ for you, family. And most of all, thank you, Father God. On this trip, I handed out backpacks full of supplies and New Testament Bibles and food and water and tents and cash to whoever I could. And as soon as he gives me the funds to get more backpacks and tents and everything I need to go back out on the streets, I'm back out on the streets. All glory to the Father. So if you're able to, and he's leading you to donate to this ministry, my PayPal link and my P.O. box is under this video in the description box. And I'll wrap it up with this. After the service at church, most of the people came up to me asking me where I'm from and why I'm there. And I told them I'm from California and I'm on a mission for Jesus Christ. And I asked them about the eclipse, if they seen it. And they did because they couldn't miss it because the whole place turned dark. And I told them that was a sign from Jesus Christ that he's coming soon. And they said, we don't think he's coming for a long time. And I told him, Israel's at war and he's coming very quickly. We're in the very last days. And he said that the signs of his coming would be in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And that's exactly what they seen happen. And I got lit up with the Holy Spirit and I showed him the holy bumps all over me. And I testified and I warned them and told them that that total solar eclipse that just went right through their town was a sign from God, Jesus Christ. And he is coming very quickly. And I told him to hold on to their faith because he's looking for faith when he comes.